Hi everybody, Robert Jones. I thought I'd take a little journey out of the kitchen and just into the dining room today. I'm gonna do a little demonstration for you guys to show you some stuff about organizing cabinets. I think it's a bane of a lot of our existences, especially those of us who cook a lot and have a lot of products going in and out of our kitchen. Um, what to do with the small stuff, what to do with the open stuff, how to organize our cupboards so we can get in and out of it. And hopefully this will make a little bit of sense to everybody and don't get crazy. Don't think you have to do all of this. Do what you can for your kitchen. Adapt it to how you live your life and what your kitchen will allow you to do. Hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, it took a little while to make and figure out how to film it. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. So check it out. I'm here. Woohoo! Okay, you guys, I'm over here at the dining room table. I'm going to do a little simulation for you guys. This is what we're going to call the tall shelf. This will be our sure first shelf display. Um, so we're going to do tall stuff on this. Now, let me explain something to you first. Now, I, have, I think it's important that you find a system that works for your kitchen. Every kitchen is different. Um, every shelf is different. You have different height shelves, thicknesses, widths, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to pretend that this shelf is something inside your cupboard. You may have smaller, you may have larger. This end is the opening and this end is the back. <clears throat> the first thing I like to do is I like to use something I call shuttles. So for instance, you could use something like this, a plastic container. You could also use something like this, a paper box or a plastic box from the trash at Costco. You could use an old wine box, depending what you got. The way that the shuttle works is this is a small container which holds, uh, or sorry, a large container which holds lots of small things. We have seeds, we have spices, we have mustard, we have some packets. So this is the shuttle that's here. I also have a secondary that can fit on top of this. So if we're gonna have, if this shelf is a tall shelf, we could have two of these stacked together. So the idea here is to put them in your cupboard so that you can build around them. So if this is the front of your cupboard and you slide in, to here, we should then be able to build around these. This is a large one, so you might have to adapt this for something that you have for smaller, so say to here. But just consider this. Okay, so let's build the shelf in a way that makes sense. Here is a different kind of shelving situation. Um, I know that a lot of apartments, especially in cities, stuff like that, have these crazy little short shelves and everything comes in size like this, tiny little sizes. So here's another solution. Um, this tray, which is just simply like a, a bean a bean tray or whatever, where canned beans come from, um, I just try to put all the, all the small stuff together. You can see we got some jellos, we got single serving pineapple juices for cocktails. Um, we found some spam on sale the other day, or not spam, um, Vienna sausages. Anyway, you can just see all these little things, little tiny bottles of flavorings. You can just put them all in here, and again, the shuttle system allows you to just pull stuff in and out of your cupboard. You can refill it. It's easy peasy. Over here, I call this being bagged to death because, I don't know about you guys, but I get, you know, stuff like grains come in these bags, um, you know, Chinese sausages. It's all this stuff that doesn't really stack. But if you put it in a box like this, it's easy to find out where you are. And if you get yourself some binder clips, you can fold them down and do this, 
or you can just put them in other jars or uh, boxes. So that's an easy solution and binder clips really work well. Somebody online the other day told me that, that Ikea has plastic clips that they like too. So that's this. Um, you know, just put like things with like things and this is good for a, a shorter shelf. Do any of you come home and find that this is your problem? I am a bulk shopper. I go to another town just south of here and I am able to find stuff like this at Winco where I just buy things like sugar, rice pasta, regular uh, pasta, tortellini, orzo, powdered sugar, this is yeast believe it or not, cocoa powder. I buy them all by bulk and I get them in a bag like this so it's cheaper and I have containers that I put these in. But I'm going to show you a solution how to do this uh, too. Instead of having this in your cupboard, which is a mess, I'm going to show you next how to, to uh, put them in some containers that I keep around and then how to organize those in your cupboard. Um, also, yes, this does seem like a lot of plastic, but I do recycle all these. I use these small ones, these small bags, to be like garbage bags for the bathroom and such like that. I try to use them two or three times, so maybe this will be one. Either the bathroom will be trash or give stuff away to people to take home instead of Ziploc bags. So here's one thing and we'll show you a solution for this as well. And our third organization is for big bulk stuff. So check this out. This is a one gallon container that came with water in it. It's perfectly clean, dry, and this can be filled with things like rice or popcorn or sugar or whatever else. And if you notice, that's a lot of volume for a little bit of counter space or a little bit of cupboard space. I've also got giant one gallon jars that were my grandparents that I keep around. Things like pasta, sugar, and don't worry if you have a rusty top like this, you can just cut a plastic insert and put, put in there and keeps your food perfectly fine. Okay, you can see we've got a lot of different stuff here. We've got one gallon containers over there in plastic, great for things like grains, popcorn, stuff like that. I've also got these one gallon jars, protein powder, pasta, whatever else. Um, these are nut containers. They come from Costco, they have mixed nuts in them. I save them, I take the labels off and they're perfect and they also stack really nicely. You can see they're very stable. I have a ton of these. Um, this had little kids candy in it, great for rice storage. Grandma's coffee jar, holds coffee filters. Back here, you know, we have things like sugar, dried garbanzos, almonds, tea. Now here's something. Anybody got Yankee candles at home? This is what you do. You clean them out. You can put things like this. This is some millet. Uh, these are old honey jars, which can, came with honey in them, but I will refill them with bulk honey. And these were from beer making. They come with maltose in them. So there's lots of different options here. Just save your containers, try to make a match, and have them fit into the cupboards that you have. If the big ones don't fit, don't use big ones. Use your smaller ones like this. But all of this, I think except these containers, are recycled in somehow or some way. All right, we are over here at my spice drawer. Some people had asked what to do with spices because they didn't know how to see them in their cupboard. So I tell you what, if you can devise a way to give up a drawer and put your spices in a shallow drawer, oh, this helps so much. Look how easy it is to see all the different things. Now, I don't have a lot of things labeled because I know what they are, but those that get confusing, you'll see like sweet basil there, I have a label. And stuff that comes prepackaged, they have a label. But you can do it the way you want to. Get out some tape, marking pen, whatever. So here's how I do my spice drawer. Try it. So here's some ideas that you might try out if you have a little bit more of a budget. Um, my budget is pretty, pretty trim, but I know there are other people out there with uh, more extravagant cupboards and they have more money to buy different types of storage units, or not units, they have different money to buy different storage devices. So check out this. This is uh, some nicer, higher-end stuff. Hello. I'm over here at a different location. And I wanted to say thank you, first of all, for the people whose house I'm in. And I want to show you a little bit more of an upscale situation. So this might be something that you could use for your cabinets. So as you can see here, we got nice wooden cabinets. And 
more of a locking system that's put in the cabinets here for staples like flour. Um, these are really cool. They have buttons on top and they open. When the button's down, you can't open it. So that's a different type of solution that you could have in your cupboards. Again, more plastic containers like mine. You can also see in the pantry here, similar shuttle system, just using baskets and boxes. And also a really good use of crystal light containers being reused for more crystal light containers and other stuff. More shuttle baskets. And then down here, using shuttle boxes for really big spices. And now above the fridge, some really great storage area. I wish I had this much storage area for cutting boards, plates, stuff like that. So again, this is over the fridge. So that's something you can make or install or buy, but that's a really good place for it to keep stuff. Here is some nice drawer organization. You can see utilizing the boxes that the Ziploc bags came in, they fit nicely into the drawer. We can add other things like clips, all centrally located. And a spice drawer. Spice drawers are really great. You can see all the different types of spice names and stuff like that. And it's very easy just to push it away. And it's closed up. Drawers are also a really good way to have all your utensils put away. This is an overflow and you can see up here on the counter there's even more. And all the wooden instruments are put together over here. Now you can see even for the hyper organized there are some things that are just rough. You know, big tea, tea drinkers over here and it's hard to fit it all together. But you know, using as many cans and bottles as you can, stack them together, and it's pretty organized. And then over here you can see that things like measuring spoons, measuring cups, baking items are all together in the first drawer. Very easy. And just a last peek. Finding the method that works for you is good. This is dish towels, and they fit together well here. And you can also see that way down in here, there's even a string holder for using binding twine and things like that. Thanks you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit of something. You don't have to kill yourself trying to do all of this. Just think about the little stuff that you can make adjustments in your kitchen to make yourself happier, feel more organized, and find what you're looking for. Thank you to Amy and Ventura for suggesting this as a video. I'm always open to other suggestions to maybe show you more of my organizational skills, since that's one of the things that I do a lot of. Or cooking, or cleaning. Maybe Aunt Greta needs to come back again. I don't know. Anyway, thanks you guys. Uh, my name is Robert Jones. You can find me almost everywhere as either Unimonious or on Facebook as Unimonious Mark II, just like the channel here. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the video. It helps me to get higher ratings and spread the word more. Make me viral! I keep saying it, but I'd love to go viral and it uh, just means I can do more stuff for you guys. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks much. Take care. Bye. Thank you.